Okay, we're back, and we're doing some mechanics. Um, in particular, uh, what a lot of people find to be relatively tricky, there are systems of objects. Um, probably the most famous or infamous, depending on your point of view, type of problem is the bunch of blocks or whatever, a bunch of objects tied together with strings. You know, find the different tensions and whatnot. Um, those are pretty common. It's kind of the poster child for systems. So what we're going to do is, is look at a way of attacking these things and thinking about them, which if you apply consistently to any systems problem, um, it's going to make your life easier. I'll, I'll, I'm pretty confident of that. So what this, this way, or what this method is, is we're first going to start with f equals ma for the entire system. Okay, Draw the force diagram as always. Let the picture help you set up the equation for the entire picture. And there's a big advantage to this because what I like to call the internal forces of the system drop out. These are the action-reaction pairs um, that, that we'll find, as we'll demonstrate in just a minute. Um, basically, by, by looking at the entire system, it's going to allow us to figure out what the acceleration is for all the blocks. And once you have masses and accelerations, then you can apply f equals ma to individual pieces and figure out whatever is left in the problem. Okay, so uh, as an example, uh, we've got this thing where there's two strings, so we'll basically be looking for the two unknown tensions, tension one and tension two. Uh, we'll be looking for the acceleration. Okay, so basically there, there's three unknowns here. Yeah, this is a pretty common sort of, of uh, problem. So um, now three equations usually means three unknowns. I should say, to solve for three unknowns, you need three equations. Um, but the way we're going to approach this, um, let's just go ahead and, and do what we should always do first, is actually look at the picture, think physically what's happening. Okay, um, the forces. We've got the hanging weight. Uh, but then we've got this tension two, which is trying to slow it down. Uh, now, for this example, we're using the also very famous, uh, you know, massless strings. We're using massless and frictionless pulleys, so the pulleys don't spin. Things like that. It simplifies life a little bit. Okay, so now as you go to the, the, the M2, we've got this uh, tension trying to pull it downhill. We've got a piece of gravity going downhill. M2g sine of whatever the angle is, and theta two. And now we've got, uh, trying to slow it down, we have tension 1 pulling uphill. And we al also have a friction force. Okay. Those are the four forces that would affect the motion for M2. And now M1, uh, we've got tension 1 trying to pull the hill. We've got a piece of gravity, M1g sine of theta 1. And we've got a friction force there as well, I'm trying to slow it down. Okay, so th those are all the relevant forces. It gets messy in a hurry. Um, the more objects you have, the more forces you have, of course. But now we're we're going to set up f equals ma for the system. Now, for doing f equals ma for the whole system, that probably means we need the whole mass, the total mass of the system. And all three have the same acceleration since they're tied together. Okay. Now, uh, on the right-hand side, we want positive forces to be anything that is in the direction of motion. And the direction of motion is basically like this. Uh, M2 and M3 are going down, M1 is going up. So, looking at our force diagram, we literally can go start at one end of, of the line, <laughs> down here, the hanging one, for example, and just look at your arrows. Uh, anything in the direction of motion is positive, anything going against the motion is negative. So we've got that gravity minus T2. Okay. Then we go to the next block. Now here, this is what I mean by internal forces. I would I would call this tension two an internal force. 
because um, in one direction it's trying to slow you down but on, on the next block it's trying to speed you up and by doing the whole system it drops out that's the that's why we do this as a first step um, but we also have uh, that downhill gravity is a positive force the friction and tension one are opposite the motion so those are negatives Okay, and that's it for that block now we go to mass one and there again there's an internal force tension one is trying to make that one go so that's going to drop out of the system and then those other two forces the friction and the downhill gravity are negative forces on that block. Okay, So this allows us to figure out an expression for the acceleration. Now it's going to look messy because we're doing symbolic right here, but that's okay. Um, the, the process is more important. So we've got um, a couple things left over here, the gravities. Uh, and then we have some negative forces, the frictions and then that other downhill gravity on M1. Okay. And if we divide that by the total mass of the system, we would have our expression for the acceleration. Okay. Now keep in mind uh, that these friction forces, if we look at our picture, um, we have to remember our gravity triangle on hills, so friction one, for example, is going to be the normal force times mu. It's our muffin equation. Now, whatever the kinetic friction is, and normal forces on hills go as the mg cosine component, and friction force 2, if we had to plug that in, uh, could be some other materials, for example, so that it might have a different coefficient of friction, and then we have m2g cosine of theta 2. Okay, so you can substitute those in depending on the problem, depending on what numbers you, you would know. Okay, so that's one of our unknowns. But the other parts of the problem were to figure out what the tension forces are. Oops. Okay. So how do we get the tensions? Well, looking at our, our little methods here, um, now that we have the acceleration, we, we assume that we know the masses, now we can isolate individual pieces of the system. Okay. So, for example, let's say we want to find tension 1. Well, the, the easiest one, looking at the picture, would probably be mass 1 right there. It only has three forces acting on it, two of which we know. Okay, so we're going to isolate mass 1, and we're going to do F equals MA just on that block. Because we know the mass, we now know the acceleration, and no, I'm not going to rewrite this expression every time. <laughs> you can if you want to. Um, and now looking at the force diagram, uh, it's moving uphill. So tension 1 is a positive force. The, uh, the friction, which I'll, I'll go ahead and write the actual expression in here. And the uh, component of gravity going downhill are both trying to slow you down. Okay, so if you know the acceleration, you could, you could put that in there, and now you can solve for tension one. Uh, it'll be mass one times acceleration plus the friction force plus the component of gravity. Okay. So there, there's our second unknown. Works out very nicely. Now to find tension 2, you could use either one of the other two blocks, M2 or M3. Uh, obviously it, it's looking like M3 is the easier one, so choose that. Uh, it's only got two forces acting on it. So when I isolate M3 and do F equals MA, It'd be the same acceleration expression or the same value. 
And now in that case, uh, it's accelerating down, so the weight is going to be bigger than tension 2. And we can solve for tension 2. And just like that, we've got our internal forces, we've got the acceleration. Um, because it's on a hill, as long as nothing weird is going on, these would be constant accelerations. So we could f say things like, um, well, in three seconds, how far has everything moved? Uh, how fast is it going after three seconds? Things like that. We could do a bunch of big constant acceleration uh, type problems if we wanted to. Um, and all that stuff would be known now. So again, um, the key is, is really the process. Uh, you know, the force diagram, do F equals MA on the system, find the acceleration, then you can do F equals MA on individual pieces, and find those internal forces, or, you know, you can vary the problem up a little bit. But the process, the way we think about this conceptually, is, is going to be the same all the time. Okay? Let the picture set up the equations for you. Um, I hope this helps, and there, there's uh, many more of these to come, I'm sure, but... Um, until next time, we'll see you later.